Okay, so now we're gonna do a major rebuild on a control valve assembly. These are all your major components. You got a piston inside this manifold. It's put together by uh, a bolt. These two connect together inside. You got two plugs on each end that plug the holes. You got a hockey puck on the top that helps shift. So we're gonna take this out. Pops right out. I'm gonna take the bolt and lock washer. Put those aside for a second. Shouldn't have to do anything to this. Um, I would just clean it out real well. Uh, all you got is a ball and two springs, as you can see, and it's all held together with a set screw, hollow. Um, I'd soak this in water and then spray it off with some acetone at the end. Um, you can set that aside. Shift rod. This is, uh, you got two O-rings on the top, as you can see, number 23. If you look on the back, 23 or OB12s, you got two of them. We're gonna be changing those out. I recommend getting a pick or anything and get that, uh, get those O-rings off. Um, usually pretty easy. Just pop them right out. Um, once you pop those off, I'd clean this cylinder, um, some water, and then finish it off with some acetone, wipe it all down real good. Make sure every, all the grooves are nice and clean. Um, once you got that all nice and clean, you can get the OB12s, um, your new ones, obviously. You wanna get a little molly note, put a little bit on your finger, just a little bit, get in, rub it around and you can replace those again. Once that's clean, new rings on it, I'd get a, paper towel, set it aside. So you have a nice clean work environment going in. Uh, now we can get to the block. You have your two bolts that connect the manifold to the top of the air motor. It should be fine. You should be able to put those aside. And we got on the left hand side you got a plug. If you use number nine bolt, you should be able to screw that in to the plug with your hand. And you got a set screw. See if you see this is the top. If you flip it, you got the back, the bottom piece, and you got the side on the back that has two mufflers. You got a set screw right here. That's what holds that plug into place. So we're gonna to wanna to take that out. It's a 332 set screw. So you need a 332 Allen key. We're gonna loosen that. Shouldn't have to take it all the way out, but you might have to. Once you get that out, you should be able to wiggle this. You see how it's starting to come out? So I usually just wiggle it until it comes free. Once it's free, you see that there's an O-ring right on the end, and that we put a dimple into the plug so the set screw can get lined up and lock it into place. So we're gonna take the plug out, remove the bolt, we're gonna set that one aside. We're gonna do the same thing to the opposite end. Stick your number nine bolt in and screw it, same thing, set screw that holds this in is on the opposite side of the other one. So if you flip this over, you'll see a set screw. Same thing, it's a 332. We're just gonna loosen that, you hear it pop, back it out a little bit. You should be able to wiggle this right out. The same thing. This has a dimple in it. You need to line that up when you install it again. I'll show you that later. This does not have any O-rings on it. 
I would just clean this off real well with water and then acetone. Uh, make sure everything's clean and smooth on the side. There isn't big dings or dents. So, and once that's clean, we'll put that aside. Now we can go inside and try to get this piston taken apart and pulled out. So this is a little bit more difficult because um, you create back pressure sometimes when trying to take these out. So what I've come up with is you get a 532 Allen key and it fits the bolt in the back. Put that in. Then you got a flathead screwdriver. You got a flathead inside. So we're just gonna hold it in there and turn to unlock this. So I heard it, twisting it. Okay, now that I got it loose, should be able to just unscrew it. Um, sometimes that bolt will fly right out. Sometimes not. So you see it. I'm trying to get a pick and grab that out real quick. Now this does have a lock washer on it as well, as you can see. You want to keep that with that and set that aside with your other bolts. Now that we got these two separated, we need to get the we need to get this piston out. The easiest way I found to do that is get a long enough Allen key and push it out from the opposite end. Once that's out, you should be able to pull it out very easily. Same thing with the other side. Get a long enough Allen key, you should be able to push that out. Now you don't want to scratch the inside of here because um, it will eventually wear down your o-rings over time so you want to be really gentle take your time try not to scrape the edges of uh, the inside of this they need to be really smooth as possible uh, so you're not replacing these o-rings on a regular basis we've got on this number two we got two O-rings and then one on the back. Set these aside real quick and show you. So number two and number three are our parts. We're gonna go to the back, find number two, number three, number two, piston, number three, shaft valve. And then we can go back to our sheet and look what number 24 is number three. So 24, we need two OB109s. On number two, we need two 22. 22 would be OB08s. So once we get those, and then we also got number 21, which is OB16s, you got two of them. So one is for your plug, the other one is for the thick part of your shaft. So we're gonna take these off. I usually get a pick, come inside and roll it off. Once you get these off, you wanna soak this in some water, clean it out, same thing, spray it off with acetone. There is a hole that is drilled out through the center for the threading of your bolt. Make sure this is all clean and free of debris. You also have a hole that's drilled in right here. And it's a breather hole, it comes out of here. You wanna make sure this is free of debris. Um, it's not plugged. You wanna spray this out with acetone and get this, uh, make sure this hole is open and air comes through here. Um, then you can reinstall your new O-rings once you got your new O-rings installed, uh, get some Molly Note, and I just go over each one with a pretty healthy 
not too much, but a little bit. You don't want to get too crazy, but you want it nice and lubed up. Once you got that lubed up, you can set that aside. We can do the same thing with number three shift valve. We're gonna replace those two O-rings. Same thing, get a pick, pull them off, replace them, get some molly note, rub around each edge. Once those are nice and moved, you can set that aside as well. Um, and then we're gonna go into the manifold itself. Um, like I said, you do not wanna scrape this or scratch this in any way. Um, you can see the shiny and the molly in there. I usually uh, put a good a little amount because you know not you don't usually have to go in here and replace any of this stuff in here often at all unless you got it backed up with catalyst. Um, you'll definitely have to replace all those O-rings because they will swell. So now that we got that, we can take a brush. Like uh, this is what we use here. You can see it's. It won't scratch the inside, but it is a brush. Usually get some acetone, come through here, and just clean all in, all around. Spray with acetone, uh, clean all everything inside, spray some acetone in here, get some in here, spray it with water afterwards. Just clean everything very well. You want this nice and smooth as well. This has been honed, um, so not to scratch up your little rings or overuse them it shifts up and down inside so now we got everything clean all our o-rings are are put on they're new so we can go back to reassembling the control valve assembly i usually start with some molly get some Nice good little mount, stick inside the hole, spread it around, get the piston drive, I'll put it in, get it nice and straight, and push it all the way. So it's all the way in there. I'll go around to the other side, get your shift valve, same thing, push it in, use my finger, push it all the way to it so they're connected. Once they're connected, you can get your number nine or number twelve bolt. Put it in the hole. Get your five thirty-two Allen key. I usually push down just a little bit to push the other piston, and then I quickly just start threading it. It's starting to catch. I can tell. And you look at the other end, it's starting to move. Once you got that, you know, they're pretty close. Put my flat end in, and I will hold it and turn. Now that does have a lock washer, number 13. So when you turn it, it will lock into place, and you'll be able to move this back and forth. Let's see? So once that feels like it's nice and free and it's moving freely, you can install your plugs. Once again, you want to get your number nine bolt from the top of the control valve, thread it, find your, your notch, find your set screw, line them up. It's easier if you take the set screw out completely for this. So then you can see the hole. Now, you want to get this in as straight as possible with the hole lined up, as you can see. Once you do that, get your set screw as a point on it. And you put that in, and we are going to tighten that down. These are usually flush pretty close to. You can install you know, install your bolt, flip it to the other side and get your other plug and do the same thing. Find your notch, find your set screw hole, line them up, slide in, 
it's your allen key and lock it into place you can take the bolt out make sure your lock washer is still on it get some molly note rub it all the way around slide that in the hole once that's installed you get your hockey puck see the two holes line up once they're in you want to screw them down with a Phillips head screw them all the way down once those are all the way installed you get your complete control valve replace your bolt and that is a total rebuild don't ever forget to replace your mufflers. These help keep debris out and quiet your machine. Each kit comes with two of them. You can buy replacements through us, but they definitely help keep debris out and quiets the machine. So that's our control valve. Let's go back up to uh, So the only thing we replaced today was two OB16s, two OB8s, two OB12s, and two 109s. And that is your major rebuild for the control valve assembly. Now we're going to install this on top of the air motor right now. Now we're installing the control valve assembly to the air motor. So we replace these OB12s. So our control valve goes on as such. Shift rod connects up into the control valve. These two holes go over your OB12s and these are your bolt holes and your bolt holes on the manifold. So it lines up, you get your two bolts. I usually wiggle them, wiggle them a little bit and start them with, by hand. Once that's started, I will grab my 532 Allen key and just start them until they just get a little snug. I don't tighten them down all the way just yet. So I wait until they just snug up. Okay, so they're snug. I'm going to take loosen these up. I'm going to get my 316 Allen key, put it in the top, and I'm going to see if I can try to catch the pump shaft by twisting. Once I do, I can pull this up, and the pump shaft is already started. It's thread. So you see that we have a flat on the top of the pump shaft. We can push this down. I usually hold this up. And we take our 3 16th Allen key and we're going to tighten these together. Okay. Once those are tight. We should be able to easily push this down. I usually check to make sure how smooth this is going up and down. I want to make sure it's nice and lined up so it's not cocked to the side in any way. If it is, you can adjust these just a hair. Um, that's why I keep this block a little loose until I, uh, I make sure this is falling in very nicely without any problems. Feels like it is. I'm going to push this down and then we're going to tighten these all the way down. 
the Phillips head, we're going to tighten them all the way down. All right, once those are all tight, make sure you use a wrench and get them all good and tight. going to finish. Once we know this is nice and straight, falling in very smoothly, we can tighten down the bolts to the top of the air motor. There we go. That's going to be all nice and flush. And that's a complete rebuild of a control valve assembly and installation on the top of the air motor.